Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, what a reversal in the market, right? Red yesterday, super green today, over 2% on the queues at one point in time. And so what happened? And again, I read the comments and I don't know what happened all the bots yesterday, but hopefully I got them all out. But understand that a lot of you said, I like, I like looking at this, that the dollar was the reason why, especially risk assets sold off. You're right. When the dollar rises, it's not good for risk assets. But look at the chart when the dollar started to spike. It started spiking at 8 a.m. going up to 11 a.m. Well, guess what the keys were doing? They were going up, right? They didn't start to sell off until the Bank of Japan dropped their news about maybe stopping that liquidity train, right? And so then it dropped. Now, to confirm my thesis from yesterday, what happened? Very early this morning, the Bank of Japan came out and did what? Kick the can down the road. So let that liquidity train keep running, baby. And the market loved it. And basically all they said was the two-day meeting that ended on Friday, the central bank kept unchanged its short-term interest rate target at negative 0.1%. And the market absolutely loved it. So again, any threat to liquidity, especially from a, company, a country like Japan, Yes, the market's not going to like it. Now it's like, great, don't have to worry about that. Another thing to sweep under the carpet. So we're not the only government that kicks the can down the road, okay? And we'll see how their inflation experiment works out. Good luck to their people. Now, we had another data dump, data dump, excuse me, of all kinds of inflation data, uh, wage data, all kinds of stuff we do with credit, revolving credit we're taking out, which that stuff shocked me, by the way. Uh, might you as well. And so we're going to go and do, uh, just like we did yesterday, rapid fire on that right there. And then get into why, you know, we've been talking about certain areas that have been beat down. They're starting to roar now. I'm going to show you why, speaking of liquidity. And so here we go. Hold on to your seats. Now, GDP we talked about yesterday. This shows where GDP came from, okay? And, and you're seeing right here, Q2, always the dark one. Business investment, absolutely way up. What really struck me, though, was consumer spending on services and consumer spending on goods. Way down compared to Q1, Right. Obviously, changing inventories went up again. That's kind of interesting. And then uh, you can see down there, residential investment still negative, net, net exports negative. Uh, federal government didn't quite spend as much, shockingly, uh, as that. And then you can see right here, this is the real GDP from previous quarters, right? And so there's Q, uh, and so there's Q2 2023, and you can see. When you look at this, there's 2023, but then there's projections, right? For Q3, Q4, and then into 2024. But that don't look so good for growth. Now, again, these are projections, but when you look to the left and you go, wow, look at 2021. Mmm, that's the actual, right? And then you go to 2022, have the negatives, but then we start picking up, and then leading into 2023, we're at least at 2% or higher. And so, but we're trending down, right? Year over year over year. So let's see what happens going forward and everything. But then you got core PCE. What happened? Came in uh, lower than expected or right at what they expected, actually. So when you look at that right there, the market loves to see that, right? You got the one month change and then you got the three month change. And then when you come over and look at the chart over here, you can see P US PCE price index year over year is the lowest it's been since March 21. Okay. 2021, excuse me. And so again, market loves to see stuff like this. That's why you're seeing some green too. Now, private wage and salaries increased at 4.1%, which is an annual rate of 1% from March to June, according to the ECI. This is the slowest pace since the inflationary period began. And so the Fed, this is kind of what they want to see, right? They want to see wage growth start too slow. And so just keep that in mind. And then you look at real disposable income, okay? June 2023, 2.5% below the forecast of where we're at, but still increased. So as inflation comes down, and wages still continue to increase. You, again, I showed you what was a, a couple weeks ago. It's actually in the positive. I know it doesn't feel like it's in the positive, uh, but it is. Then you got this one right here. And look at this right here. Revolver consumer credit. This is credit cards taking like uh, heat locks out, things like that. You can see, look at that. That was like a meme stock chart, right? We're definitely taking a boatload of credit. That's in billions, by the way. But again, you look at percent of disposable personal income and you can see it is increasing not nowhere near as fast as what we're doing as far as taking out debt but the good news is this right here only 11 percent of households have any form of debt that is adjustable rates which means as the fed raises rates they will not be affected so only the 11 percent will be affected that means what 89 percent will not be affected okay so just keep that in mind that number has come down over the years 
And so that's actually a, a strong thing for uh, consumers. And guys, before we continue, if you get anything out of this, please hit that thumbs up down there. I really appreciate it. And if you like the material here in the videos, think about subscribing. And again, you get inflation coming down still. You get the, all of a sudden wages starting to slow a little bit. On top of what the Bank of Japan said here, keep the gravy train growing, or going, excuse me, as far as liquidity is concerned. And the market tends to take off, plus it's weekly options expiration. Don't forget about that. Uh, so just, and you can guarantee, I'll guarantee it. Maybe some of you were doing it too. People were loading up on puts like crazy yesterday. All right, when they saw that reversal and everything, and they got scorched today. So market makers went again on that one. I guarantee it was like one DTE uh, type option. So just keep that in mind. And you can see a lot of short squeezes going on today for sure because all the sectors were super bullish except for two. One was utilities. I think the other was real estate. And so just keep that in mind because I, like I said, a lot of people are loading up on put, shorting stocks, things of that nature. Actually, I'm sorry, it was energy, not real estate. And then what did you see with Chinese stocks? You know, I've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks, probably a couple of months actually way up today way up and i mean just insanely high and of course why is this well came out today not only is china trying to do some kind of stimulus you got a report from bloomberg now saying that the market's watchdog has consulted security firms for possible measures to boost stocks with a cut in the stamp duty and a slowdown in the initial public offerings to help liquidity among the steps proposed by brokers this is happening while of course China's economic data is absolutely horrific. And so again, what, what trumps? Anything else? Listen, man, <laughs> I just need some liquidity. You know what I'm saying? So just keep that in mind. And that's one thing you're seeing in Baba, right? It's getting this reaction. But remember with Baba, you put a volume profile on this thing. See those huge green candles? That's what it loves to move through, right? It'll move up and then trade sideways once it gets up to a volume node. It did it, what, three, four, five days now. And so you see a volume gap. Boom, there's another one. And it hits a node and trades sideways. I mean, it's almost the same pattern every day. Pops up, trades sideways the rest of the day. Boom, hits a volume gap. There we go, right? And when you look at this, you know, you can see, and I'm going to draw this real quick for you. Again, you got to look for those rounding bottoms. And in the short term, you know, just going back to the beginning of 2023 over here, this won't be perfect. But that's exactly what you're seeing. And especially if it takes out 105 right there, that's going to be super bullish to lead up to 120, okay? Because this thing dropped like a rock from January into March. And so, again, this is why it moves like this. This is an ARD, so it leaves gaps everywhere. I don't think the gap feels really mean much as it does in other stocks, as someone was explaining to me about that. So just keep that 105 level, 120 level in mind right there. And you can see EVs, it don't matter what country they're in. It don't matter if they're delivering 100 cars, a million cars green 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 okay tesla's not in here but tesla's green too okay and speaking of tesla it's only three levels i'm watching obviously nice day for today bounce back i'm looking for that weekly low around 154 to be broke or 168 to get above it close above it and we'll be super bullish is get above that weekly high right there which of course is over because today is friday so i'm going to race that one right there but again i'll mark that level so if you get above that right there, you're going to see 274 definitely in the cars for it. But again, 268 is the key level. 254 for me is the key level. I'm just watching those for Tesla. We know how it likes to move. Uh, has some calls coming in for it. And again, if it breaks 254, then down we go most likely. Then you got AMD and just look at that trend line, man. God, that thing just holds and holds in that 110 area. Just keeps holding up. Buyers keep running in there right there. And so just keep that in mind. I should put the 50 up here while I was thinking about it. Again, it don't have that negative divergence on the RSI because it already played out, right? It already had it and then it played out for it. And so it just keeps consolidating around that 110 area over and over and over. And I'm actually gonna draw another trend line in here because they're gonna have earnings coming up next week. And again, what was I talking about? And this happens to match up perfect with it is where that line around 103 to 105 intersects right there that trend line if we do get negative news on the earnings then definitely watch out for there i think i've, I've seen anywhere from 98 to 103 somewhere in that range uh you know would be a good drop down if we get negative earnings okay keep that in mind now microsoft big money came in save the day again told you doesn't want to get below that volume node right there it doesn't want to bust below the 50 because if it drops in there it's going to drop it's going to go down around 315 ish somewhere in there so once again, big money comes in, saves a day, pushes it up a little bit, trying to get it back in that channel, start getting more constructive here. And it's amazing how that works. It's not accidental. It's just amazing how it always works like that. 
and then you see Meta. I put this channel back up here because it tends to respect it. It's right at the top of that channel right now. Still moving up at 324 the last I checked as I record this. So again, we got all kinds of gaps down below right here. But this one right here, I mean, man, Big Money loves this one. The valuation is actually better on this one than it is a lot of the other mega caps, which is why they're pushing it up, especially after this last quarter when they raised guidance. And I mean, this one, I'll be stunned. If the market obviously turns, Meta will turn with it. But for the most part, I mean, this one, I'll be shocked if it doesn't set a new all-time high, uh, you know, sometime this year. But I understand this one can go against the market. Even when the market starts turning red, I'm talking about like normal red days, see if this one's green that's usually where you'll see you'll kind of be able to spot your strength and a lot of these stocks and stuff because you'll see that like bible was green the other day when the market was really red or something and then when the market was really green bible went red and so you kind of see that in chinese stocks especially like i said i would never own them long term it's just me but i'll trade the living heck out of them right and so i have no problem doing that because again i don't live over there i don't trust the government i don't understand half of what they do and i got too many great companies right here in this country uh, and I know how corrupt our government is over here and how they, you know, manipulate everything with liquidity and, you know, paying for infrastructure bill and do all this crazy mess. So uh, I feel more comfortable with that system. That's just me. Again, I make no judgment on anybody that does it. it. It could work out for you greatly, as a matter of fact. And so, you know, let me know how your day turned out. Were you shocked? Were you buying puts? Were you shocked the day was so green? You know, and there, there's a reversal as I'm actually talking about this. The reversal of the market's turning down right now. But again, or are you stunned or not, right? And so just, just kind of curious and stuff. And what's your prediction for next week? Remember, we got month in on Monday, okay? And so we're going to be starting a new month. And so uh, we'll see where we go from there. And I'll end up putting a video out Sunday, obviously, getting a set up for the week and everything with the indexes and a lot of, a lot of earnings, okay? And a lot of uh, high beta stuff. So there's going to be some huge movements in these stocks. So just keep that in mind. So hope you guys are mind of it, guys. Hit that like and subscribe button. Really appreciate you guys who watch the videos and stuff and share them. Uh, can't thank you enough for your support. Okay. So have a good one, guys.